KFR Talk. You're listening to Focal Point with Brian Fisher. Focal Point with Brian Fisher. Hi, and welcome back to this Monday edition of Focal Point AFR Talk. Just enjoyed my conversation with Robert Stacy McCain about the importance of this primary election in the state of Mississippi. And this is not the only place where there will be a primary tomorrow. I'll see if I can grab my little cheat sheet about the number of primaries that are going to be held around the country tomorrow. Do not forget, if you're looking for a source of information uh, about candidates, go to afaaction.net. AFAaction.net. You can find the voter guide there that's produced by our C4, our 501C4 AFA Action. There are primaries tomorrow, June 3rd, in not only in Mississippi, but also in Alabama, in California, in Iowa, in Montana, in New Jersey, in New Mexico, and in South Dakota. Now, some of the states, we actually break down legislative races. But every congressional race is going to be profiled on this voter guide. If you have a question about how AFA action arrived at its assessment of these candidates in terms of how conservative they are, you can click through and drill down to all of the data that's used to kind of assess where these candidates are. And the purpose here is to try to get beyond the rhetoric and get actually down to their record so you can understand what these candidates actually do stand for and will work for if they get into office. Now, um, let's grab clips number one and two, uh, Rob, before we go back to the phones. The number to call is 888-589-8840. If you'd like to call and join the program, 888-589-8840. Phil Robertson, Duck Dynasty. You know, I just thank God for this guy every day because he, like Franklin Graham, no buckle, no waffle, no wavering, no compromise, no capitulation, on the issue of what the Bible says. You know, we had our cell group last night that that I uh, am fortunate enough to lead, and we were looking in Matthew 5 at the teaching of Jesus about the law. And he says, look, the Pharisees abolish the law. They try to lower the moral standards of God. But he says the moral standards of God, he says not one jot or tittle will pass away from the law until heaven and earth pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away before one jot or tittle of God's moral law passes away. Uh, and so it says, don't think I came to abolish the law. I have not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it for you to understand its full meaning. And he says, look, the moral standards of God are going to be valid until the end of time. Heaven and earth will pass away before even the smallest letter or the smallest part of the smallest letter, will pass away from God's law. So that means that marriage, for instance, as the union of one man and one woman, God has defined that in the Scriptures. That is going to be marriage. That's going to be the definition of marriage until the end of time. Heaven and earth will pass away before marriage becomes anything other than union of one man and one woman. Uh, homosexuality as a sin. It will be a sin until the end of time. Heaven and earth will pass away before homosexuality becomes anything other than a, uh, uh, th- than a sin because it will be a sin. God's word stands. God's truth, God's moral standards will stand until the end of time. They will never change Phil Robertson understands that. Franklin Graham understands that. Here's Phil Robertson uh, talking with uh, Sean Hannity about the founders. uh, Clip one. Let's listen. Actually, most people, they don't think I have too much sense because I'd rather be fairly intelligent and act dumb instead of not having any sense at all and try to act smart. You see what I'm saying? (laughs) Yeah. So the bottom line is I have a couple of degrees. I mean, it's not like I'm some dumbo. But I researched our founding fathers, Sean, and any way you want to slice it, they were godly men, the vast majority of them. I just read about them, and I'm thinking, well, I'm no different than they are. They loved God. They carried their Bibles. They followed the Lord Jesus. So I'm thinking, I'm like them. Because I'm just like them. They were followers of Christ. They believed in the Scriptures. They were devoted Christians. And I can be one of those, too. Now, here is clip number two. Uh, This is Phil Roberts again. He's gotten a lot of trouble for saying what the Scriptures teach, that homosexuality is a sin. 
And he's always been very good about this. I mean, the reason that we call homosexuality a sin is that we want people to recognize that in order that they may be saved. We want them to live a healthy, prosperous, long life in this age, and we want them to have a place in the age to come. And the Scriptures are very clear that that is a sin. That's a lifestyle that will keep you out of the kingdom of God. It will keep you out of the kingdom of heaven. So when we are warning people about that, it's not because we're mean. It's not because we don't like people. In fact, if we hated homosexuals, we wouldn't warn them of the eternal consequences of their behavior. You understand that? If we disliked homosexuals, like the gay lobby says we do, if we hated them, if we were intolerant of homosexuals, we wouldn't warn them. We wouldn't alert them to the danger that was ahead of them. If you got somebody who is a sworn enemy of yours and you see him heading for a cliff and you hate his guts, you want the worst for him, Are you going to warn him? No, you want to see him go over the cliff. You're not going to warn him. You're not going to try to flag him down. You want to see him get what's coming to him. But see, we're not like that with homosexuals. We don't dislike them. We don't hate them in the least. We see that the bridge is out on the road that they're headed. It's going to lead to destruction. We don't want to see anybody wind up there. And so we warn them. And we have to warn them because there are so many voices out there saying that that gay is okay, God is okay with gayness. You can be a Christian and go to heaven and still be involved in the homosexual lifestyle. All of this are, are lies. They're, they're all lies. And we want to alert people to the lies that they are believing so that they will not make a fatal and eternal uh, mistake. And this is what Phil Robertson talks about, clip number two. Let's listen. Well, you know, if you had no biblical training, had no idea about the spiritual realm and just raised up in an environment where there was no God, no Jesus. You know, what do you expect? Our job is to go out there, show them we love them, tell them the good news, and we get on down the road. I would never judge or condemn anyone. I mean, the Almighty, that's his job. I just give them the good news. Some of them kind of kick and scream about it, but we just give it to them and say... And you you personally had a pretty wild life at one point. I I lived with the wicked for 28 years. I've been with the godly for 40. Right. Trust me, this last 40, a little better. What, the contrast has been astounding <laughs> between the two. So he's a testament to what God can do when he gets hold of a repentant sinner. And, you know, that's what he's saying. Look, no, no, no one of us is, has any moral superiority over anybody else. Not, not one of us does. All have sinned and have fallen short of the glory and the character of God. And we want others to find the same forgiveness and promise of eternal life that we have found uh, in Christ. Now, let's go to clip number 9 and 10, uh, Rob. We're talking about the fact that Republicans all over the place are caving on the issue of same-sex marriage. That's one of the reasons I asked Senator McDaniel on Friday directly. A lot of um, uh, Republicans are retreating on the issue of same-sex marriage. They're giving up the fight. Uh, What will you do? And he says, look, I don't back away from the social issues whatsoever. I think the social issues are absolutely critical. But here is one of the ones that's gone weak in the knees. This is Senator Orrin Hatch. Uh, Clip number nine, Senator Orrin Hatch giving up on the battle to protect natural marriage. Well, uh, uh, these are very tough questions, but they need to be answered. And they need to be answered with good law, which this bill is. And uh, uh, let's face it, uh, anybody who does not believe that that gay marriage is going to be the law of the land uh, just hasn't been observing what's going on. And, you know, they get mad at Shelby, uh, the uh, federal district judge, because he made that ruling. So he said, look, anybody does not believe that gay marriage is going to be the law of the land, just hasn't been observing what's going on. What does that sound like to you? That sounds like capitulation to me. That sounds like absolute surrender. That sounds like a guy saying the war is over. There's nothing we can do about it. Let's just surrender. That's the message that we heard from Russell Moore. He's been changing his tune lately because I think he's starting to feel some of the heat. But Russell Moore was saying the same thing. Look, this is inevitable. There's nothing we can do. Uh, We just have to adjust it. We have to accept it. Here is clip 10, Orrin Hatch continuing, picking up where he left off. But I think that it's a portent of the future that sooner or later, uh, gay marriage is probably going to be approved by the Supreme Court of the United States. And certainly as, as the people in this country move towards it, especially young people. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think that's the right way to go. 
On the other hand, I do accept uh, accept whatever the courts say. So he says the trend right now is for the courts to accept uh, gay marriage. And, again, that's a fatalistic, defeatist attitude. I just accept whatever the courts have to say. And this is despite the fact that Republicans, and Orrin Hatch would count himself among them. He used to be the chairman of the Judiciary Committee, so he knows what he's talking about. We know, according to separation of powers, that the Supreme Court is not the final authority. The Constitution is the final authority. The Constitution does not mean what the courts say it means. The Constitution means what the founders intended for it to say. The Constitution means what the Constitution means, not what some judge uh, says it means. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for being with us on Focal Point today. Uh, we'll be right back here tomorrow. I hope you will uh, tune in. I uh, got a story looking at here about this debacle in the Veterans Administration. Uh, and I mentioned this earlier in the program, but there are some veterans hospitals with the worst records that have got the biggest bonuses. Uh, and Eric Shinseki, before he resigned on Friday, he appointed a, my, a guy by the name of Jeffrey Muroski to take over the whole health care system from the Robert Petzl, who had decided to retire in 2014, wasn't fired. He was going to retire. Uh, he had responsibility for the Edward Hines VA Hospital in Cook County, uh, Illinois, and they discovered that five veterans died waiting for health care at Hines, and a lot of the employees there received bonuses while veterans were dying under their care. More on that all tomorrow. That's it for today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Don't forget to bow low before God. Stand tall before man. Stand in the gap. Never forget, we are fighting a winnable war. Tomorrow, if you got a primary, don't forget to vote. See you tomorrow. <laughs>